Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Dr. Kev and today we just hit 20,000 subscribers. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you for watching and staying with us and I really appreciate your support and your feedback. Today I'm headed out with my best friend Alex. We're gonna do a little bit more poke polling. We're going for our personal best eels. We're gonna make ourselves a fantastic Italian eel dish. So stick with us. Good morning, folks. Uh, we had to switch gears. We did a bunch of hook and line yesterday. No luck, the swell was pushing everything around. So we decided an oldie but a goodie and we made some poke poles. It was a super <laughs> duper low tide. It's like crazy, crazy low right now. So we're gonna go out and we're just gonna look for some rockfish. That's what we're after. We're not gonna go for eels, but maybe we'll take an eel. I don't think we're gonna take an eel. Let's go for some rockfish. All right, I can't help it. I gotta stop and talk about that. These layers here are geological stratigraphy. So they're, they're layers of sediment that were horizontal on the seafloor at one point, and then they cemented together and became rock. And then through plate tectonics, they were uplifted. And now you can see these bands are vertical and all convoluted and everything because of that plate tectonic action. Guys, I think you should stay here. Stay here. <laughs> Alex is telling stories about us getting blamed for crimes we didn't do back in our skateboarding days. It's, uh, it's pretty funny reminiscing about these, these characters. Crimes we could never be capable of doing. Never. We were just talking about the foghorn and like I know it's really loud so I'll probably kind of montage this a little bit but um, it's one of those sounds that neither of us really feel is offensive even though it's loud. Instead, for us, it's kind of comforting because we grew up, you know, out in these environments and going out on the boats. It was kind of nice to know that there's a foghorn telling you where the jetty is so that you don't run, a, run aground into it. Um, and also, just like, you know, when the fog comes in so thick. So thick that you can't see anything. It's nice to be able to find your way back, back in the day before we all had GPSs. So anyway, I'll kind of speed this up unless we're catching something because I know that foghorn's pretty loud. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> yeah! Woo! No skunk, baby! Gonna have to start calling me Catch and Cook. Dr. Catch and Cook, the eel king. <laughs> oh man, I've been doing good with the eels lately. Look at the size of that bad boy. That is huge! Alright, buddy. Eel? Yeah. Okay. We're keeping this, yeah? Alright, dude. We're doing some eel. Italian style, alright. There's probably another one there. You should totally fish that hole. Hold it up, buddy. <laughs> Woo! 
Same hole. That nice. That's great. Dude, when was the last time you caught an eel? Never. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. <laughs> Little skunk, baby. <laughs> Try and get his head bent back. And then. Oh, shit. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna come in and cut. Alright. Alright, I think we're through the spinal cord. So he should be technically paralyzed, but these things are the hardest uh, fish to kill. Um, so we're doing it as humanely as we can, but it may look brutal. I'm not showing you details because it does look brutal, but it's as quick as we can do it. Cut the gills, sever the spine, get your knife in there and cut the spinal cord. And that's the most humane way, in my opinion, to dispatch them. You can stab them in the brain, you can smack them in the head, and they will be alive an hour later. So I like dispatching animals as quickly as possible because, you know, this animal just gave its life to sustain our own. I think the least we can do is give it the quickest death that we can. All right, buddy, good job. Thanks. Boom, Captain Bloody Hands there. Yeah. <laughs> Time to go rinse our hands. Dude. Look at that. Dude. <laughs> and then yours, 21? Dude, it's like 20 and three quarters. <laughs> All right, I just gotta pause the video here for a second and say that we were so excited that we never even noticed that that is Alex's first and therefore personal best eel. And that's also my personal best eel. That's a 26 inch long monkey face prickleback. That's pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to it. How was that? I can just imagine my fa face must be so pale right now. I didn't think it would affect me like this, but it's not like any other fish man it's tough and then uh, just as you're you think you got a good handle on it it just flips out of your hand meanwhile you're like meanwhile you're holding a, a knife and there's the hook coming out of his mouth so like I was worried about getting hooked and stabbed and trying to crack its neck open or its neck back was like almost impossible it's it was uh, probably the craziest fish killing experience I've had thus far. But I'm looking forward to eating them. It's the craziest fish killing experience he's had thus far. <laughs> dot, 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 the day is young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Um, these are gonna be delicious. So, ah, Alex went to culinary school. He's a fantastic chef. He's also Italian and he loves Italian cooking. And we were talking about this the other day. I haven't done a lot of Italian recipes on the channel, um, but you know, I cook Italian food quite frequently. And this dude, he's such a good cook. So we're gonna let him take over. I'll be the sous chef today. We'll make some Italian eel dish. All right. <laughs> he's still in shock. <laughs> <laughs> so we were not prepared. Like I said, when we got on this jetty, I was like, yeah, We'll go for rockfish. I thought we were too far south, which is a hint of where we are, to find eels. Um, but instead, no rockfish, and yet the eel game was on today. But because we weren't prepared, we made these poke poles last night, and we used uh, some tape that uh, apparently is not waterproof, so it's coming undone. And I always back it up with a little string underneath just in case something like this happens. But I want to show you how you could fix this if this happens to you. So I'm gonna show you this hitch. And, and one of you viewers, if you know what this hitch is called, please leave it in the comments because I can't remember the name of it, but I use it all the time and I love this hitch. So I'm gonna wrap this back up and then show you how I would fix it. All right, so we're gonna start with a long string and toward one end, we're gonna make a bend, just like that. Simple, right? I'm gonna lay it down right here, parallel to the pole, right, right on top of that area that I wanna fix. So I've got a loop here. I'm gonna take the long end, I'm gonna start wrapping. And I'm wrapping it really tight, trying not to hook myself. It's 
So it'll look like that. You got the loop, you got that one strand that's hanging down, and then you've got a bunch of wraps. We're gonna take this tag end, holding it very tight, so I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. That tag end is gonna go through the loop. <clears throat> now that it's through the loop, I'm gonna keep tension on it. I'm gonna bring it over and I'm gonna anchor it with my other finger here. So it's gone wrap, wrap, wrap through the loop. Now I'm gonna grab this end and I'm gonna pull. And it's gonna grab that string and it's gonna pull it tight up to the edge and then we want it halfway down underneath those wraps. Just like that. Now it's in place. So this is not a knot, this is a hitch. And the cool thing about this is I can pull this tag end and the whole thing comes undone. So if you have a limited amount of cordage with you, this is a totally cool way that you can maintain that piece of cordage and uh, you know you reuse it over and over again. That's it, that's how I would fix it. And then you can cut these tag ends, you're good to go. We're gonna walk back triumphantly right now and uh, display our catch and see if uh, some of these tourists around here wanna get some photos, I bet they will. <laughs> Always three points of contact when you're out here walking. If you can do that, you can use the base of your poke pole like a walking stick, but always keep three points of contact and you'll resist falling. No joke, this is quicksand. Take a look. from where we come from. That's great. <laughs> so we just moved locations. We're now, I think, at the third location today. Um, we're up on a little bluff here. We're gonna do some filleting of the eels. So we'll do the eel for dinner. So yeah, that's what's up. First fillet. First fillet. Chick fillet. <laughs> you did good, man. Thanks. All right. So we both just got hit by a sneaker wave. Obviously, we're fine, but we were so concentrated on filleting. Even though we positioned our bodies to have one shoulder and one eye on the water, we got so into this that boom, this wave just comes over the top. You got to be careful. I mean, we obviously have to be careful too, but. Yeah, if you start doing this stuff, please, please be careful of these sneaker waves because it was totally flat, no problem. And all of a sudden we've got a wave that came up. It's 12 feet down here on this bluff and it just came up and crashed over us. So you could get knocked in, you hit your head and that could be the end. So heads up, 
But on a positive note, Alex just filleted his first eel, and I want to show you how little meat he's got left on these bones. He did an excellent job. He did a better job filleting his than I did filleting mine. I'm super impressed. Check this out. So we're going to take this common grocery bag, <laughs> and uh, you can get it from any grocery store. You know, it's just a basic paper bag. And we're just gonna take, uh, since we don't have the proper uh, flora for this project, we're just gonna be tearing little pieces at a time. And you know, something maybe half inch to maybe three quarters, I don't know. <laughs> you know, and then we just go over here and we lift up our paperweight. I made, <laughs> I turned a rock into a paperweight. <laughs> That's all it is at this point, you know. <laughs> I got it! <laughs> You're such a character, man. <laughs> nice, dude. Here's a technique from the, the great Jacques Pepin. I've always loved cutting the cheese. <laughs> You've always loved what? I've always loved cutting the cheese. <laughs> we just realized that Kevin forgot the avocado and the tomato. So it's a little bit of a boring salad, but you know what? It's on the side anyway. 
I'm really excited about the eel. Okay guys, it's ready. Check that out. Oh my gosh. We got the eel, we got garlic bread, nice little salad. Very simple, yet totally smells amazing. Yep. Like, I'm so excited about this. What do you think? Any, any words on this? Uh, yes. I'm hungry. Looks really good. It's really fun to cook. Really fun to do this with you. Oh man, always. Always, man. We've been doing this since we were kids. And uh, it's a really good place. And uh, I've never had an eel before. Well, I've never cooked an eel before. So, let's see how this, this is. I'm down, dude. Goodness, it. man. It's got some texture to it. Hang on a second. Thanks. Wow. So this is super firm. I've never yeah. had eel actually have a texture like this. It's almost like just, just flaking it apart like like shark or something. It's like really firm. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh my god. No, dude. Do you think it is? I don't know. The skin no. is good. Dude, I think that's oh. I think it's a little overdone. But that's just me. It's delicious. Well, I feel like it could be is eel usually like this? It's not usually that's chewy. Mm. So it's super juicy. The skin is really good. Oh man. Mm. I don't think it's overdone, man. No? It's juicy all throughout. But that texture is like, got a bounce to it. It really mm. does. But damn, those flavors are so good. And the, the skin's awesome. The flavor's delicious. All right, well, how about those garlic bread? Dude, that eel oh. is super good, man. The eel is good. Reds the bomb. Mm. 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 Oh my god. I need some of the balsamic salad. Look at that. How curled the skin is. taco. <laughs> Dude, salad's good too, man. That's a, that's a good, good eel, man. I like this texture. Like, a perch falls apart in your mouth. It's like mushy in a way, mm -hmm. right? This has like chewy, like, Together. It's got texture, man. This is good. It's al dente. <laughs> I hope not, man. <laughs> I'm looking at this, the cross section. No, that's cooked all the way through, man. That's good. <laughs> Dude. Oh, yeah. The beer. Mm. It's extremely hard to set that plate down. We're going to completely finish that in a moment. But Poseidon Brewing Company sent out a few beers for us to try. This one is the Liberty Card Lager, German style Helles. Is that how that's? Hells? H-E-L-L-E-S? Helles. Helles. Super excited about it. Check out this graphic for the divers. 
is in a hookah rig playing like a ukulele. Pretty awesome. I've had a few of their beers before and they make some awesome beers. Alex and I have been brewing beer together for like years and years. So I'm hoping with our experience, our expertise, we'll be able to, I don't know, break down some of the flavor profiles in here and give you a, a proper review. Cheers. Cheers. PB Eels, both of us. Boom! Yeah. Yeah! Mm -hmm. Alright. I love this. Dude. It's That's a good like, lager. Dude, yeah. And it's like perfectly balanced. It is. I I kind of expected it to be a little too weedy. But um it's good, it's refreshing. It's got a good mouth feel. It does have a good mouth feel. And it's, uh, you got the, that maltiness this can be really, really sweet sometimes. And like, for mm. me, that's a little off-putting, but this is not too sweet. It's sweet, but it's, I feel like, balanced with the bittering hops. Like, yeah, like perfect. For sure. And the, the aromatics are not like really up in your face or, you know, very it's Not forward. too much, yeah, exactly. There's yeah. nothing that overpowers the other one. That's a good beer. That's a good beer. Well, thank you to Poseidon Brewing Company. <laughs> Man, I don't even usually buy lagers. That's a fantastic beer. Hey, would we say if it was disgusting? Heck yeah, we would say if it was disgusting. See that? <clears throat> I'm not, yeah, yeah. I will always be honest with my reviews. If I get a piece of gear and I try it and I don't like something about it, I'm gonna tell you. If I like some things and not others, I'll tell you. If I didn't like that beer, I'm not gonna say it. All right, folks. This last year and a half has been intense to say the least for all of us. And if you're anything like me, you're looking for a laugh. So if you need to laugh and you enjoyed this video, go check out Alex's channel. It's Polyverse Pictures. Polyverse Pictures on YouTube. <laughs> We're good for a laugh. <laughs> Dude, uh, I would recommend Hot Dog Hero and I would recommend uh, the one where you make coffee, hotel coffee? Yeah, how to make hotel coffee. <laughs> yeah, so if you need a laugh, check out Polyverse Pictures. I'll leave a link in the description. <laughs> Alrighty folks, we're gonna finish up this plate, but until next time, keep the old ways alive. Hey, here's your outtakes. Keep the old ways alive. Keep, <laughs> do what he said. You hear me? <laughs> here's your outtakes, even though this whole video is outtakes. <laughs> here's a, a PSA for you. Never turn your back on the ocean. Always look at it. I mean, not always, but look up at it once in a while. Basically, uh, don't don't go through life half asleep. <laughs> it's a super duper low time. <laughs> I refer to it as a measuring tape. <laughs> Dude. Boom. Yeah. Hang on. <gasps> yeah, yeah, bro! <laughs> I think that's enough. <laughs> Public service announcement. Don't leave it on the grill for too long. I am so glad I caught something because I haven't caught anything in two years besides a case of crabs. <laughs> <laughs>